tech for techs. Length really does matter. Phil compares it to his. And sometimes not having a slippery bottom is a really good thing. This and more on Tech for Tech. Hi everyone, Phil from Tech for Techs here. Today I'm going to be looking at this capsule from NZXT. It's got a recommended retail price of just under £110 and we have links in the description just below. Before we go on to the main video, if you would do us a favour, click that like button, subscribe, click the bell as well, and that way you'll get notifications of new videos and live streams we do. Again, doing all these things helps support the channel, and helping to support the channel allows us to release more videos, better quality videos, and more content exclusively just for you. Okay, as you can see, we have got the capsule in front of us. It's by NZXT. It doesn't have any of their logos on the front, apart from a small bit on the actual device itself. So it's hard to see if you've just got loads of boxes in a row uh, without looking at the top or the sides. But it is an NZXT product. It doesn't say much on there other than it being a cardioid USB microphone. If you're not sure what that means, it gathers the sound from just in front of it and around that area rather than behind it and so forth. So it's not going to pick up any like surround sound noises from behind it like the other side and stuff like that we'll show some diagrams above just to give you a bit more information but that's pretty much it for the front of the box on the side you have got your full specifications down here it does tell you about the uh, polar patterns which we just mentioned and all the different things on there as well as well as frequencies and so forth on the back it tells you it's designed for gamers high audio quality it is 24 bit resolution which is actually quite high most devices you usually uh, like this usually come with I think it's around about 16 bits so it should be a slightly better sound quality than a lot of the others on the market uh, I use a blue Yeti and that has got 16 bits so it gives you a rough idea so uh, in theory the sound quality should be better from this and it's uh, simple and rugged uh, and the rest of it is in different languages down there, but it does show you a diagram points at all the different bits and so forth. And this side tells you all the specifications, but in different languages. So that's pretty much it for the box. Um, so let's open it up and see exactly what we've got. Okay, so this is what's in the box. First of all, you've got another box. This is obviously where the microphone and everything comes inside. Uh, it is actually very well padded. Probably one of the better padded products I've seen on the market. Nice padded and foam inside and cut out foam in here so nothing moves around. No plastic bags with the exception of the main box does come with a shrink, um, shrink wrapped plastic on it to protect it and keep the box looking nice. Probably not needed. I would like to see seen them do away with that save the environment and everything but overall pretty good in general on top of that you've got the microphone and the stand we'll come to that in a second but it does come pre-assembled like this you've got the USB type C to USB type A cable we'll measure that in a second and let you know how long that is as well as an adapter this is obviously to allow you to screw onto the bottom when you take it off the stand which will go into there uh, and then allow you to fix something like a boom arm or an arm on your desk basically something else like obviously you can move around what's attached to your desk so you can get the microphone closer to your mouth obviously generally it's always best getting a microphone as close to your mouth as realistically possible this bit here took us a second or two to figure out what this is because obviously we've got no manuals because we've reviewed this pre-release uh, but what it is is you can actually detach the stand from this arm and it leaves a gap on the back you push that in and it fills the gap in let's take a closer look at the microphone itself 
Okay, so let's go to the microphone. Before we do that, the cable. I've just measured the cable. It is actually three meters, which is obviously 300 centimeters long. That is very good because in most cases, microphones and peripherals, we usually find they come with anywhere between a meter, maybe a meter and a half. And if you're lucky, two meters long. This is three meters long. So that is very, very good, to be honest with you. So let's have a quick, closer look at the microphone itself. So first of all, on the front, you have got two dials on there one is for your gain so obviously that's how loud the microphone is or how much sound it picks up and the other one on there is for a headset so that's if you would have got a headset plugged into there so you could listen to your own voice or whatever uh, if you wanted to do that on the bottom you have got as we said We've got the adapter which allows you to connect it to the bottom which you can then screw in like your uh, boom or an arm or whatever it may be if you didn't want to include the stand. It also has your USB type C connector there as well which is pretty good and then it also has your microphone, uh, sorry your headphone jack on there as well if you're going to use it. Not everyone does, some people do, some don't. And then it's obviously got the manufacturer, uh, manufacturer specifications. On the back You've got a little button here. If you press that little button, press it in, it allows you to detach the actual stand from the microphone itself. And that's where you'd get this little bit here and push it on the back, which will cover it up, um, which then you can attach your boom arm on there. If I get it the right way around, it probably help. But there we go. So it clicks on like that. Okay. To take it off, it just pulls straight back off again if you did want to reattach it to the stand. Looking at the stand itself, let's just hope that doesn't roll away. Stay, there we go. The arm itself, it, it is steel, it's not plastic. You can hear it there, so that's pretty good. Again, you can adjust the height and, well, not the height, but the actual tilt of the microphone if you wish. The base is sort of like a one ring what goes all the way around into the stand itself with a huge piece of rubber in the centre which is actually the bit what's going to be sitting on your table with anti-slip so it's not going to slide around and that means that it shouldn't pick up much in the way of vibrations or sound coming through your desk, which is always a bonus. Obviously, we're gonna do a few tests in a bit just to see how it performs, uh, and we will stick it onto an arm as well to see if there's much of a difference. Uh, but there you go, that's the basics to it. But again, if you want to fit that back on there, it's just a case of basically pushing it on, and it should just push in, there we go, and then you can tilt it back and forth however you want. But bear in mind, you need to be sitting in front of this bit here uh, for it to pick up the sound. And ideally you want that sort of uh, level with wherever your mouth's gonna be. So if your mouth's gonna be up here, that needs to be sort of pointing at your mouth. Okay, for the rest of the review, I'm going to be using the NZXT capsule microphone so you'll be able to hear what it actually sounds like, with the exception of when I do the comparison videos where I'm comparing it against a Blue Yeti microphone and, say, a microphone that was built into a web camera so you can hear the actual differences and hopefully you can hear straight away that this sounds pretty nice. Okay, I've got the NZXT capsule on my desk, roughly around about 18 inches away from my mouth, which would be roughly where you would have it on your desk if you were probably streaming or something along that lines, uh, or doing a podcast. So this will give you a good comparison to what it would sound like. Now I'm using the next capsule next to my mouth using a boom arm as you can see in the picture this allows it to be closer to my mouth but it also allows you to have more of a richer voice and sound to it and it can actually sound quite sexy if you get it set up right and the sound can be a lot better but when you put it further away on the desk generally you tend to find your voice can be a little bit more flatter so i would suggest anyone who's wanting to go professional is get a boom arm i've now got the capsule on my desk i'm just going to knock the desk a few times just to see if you can feel the vibrations through the stand to see how good the actual stand is because obviously when you're using this you're going to be typing a lot more than likely you'll probably have some form of mechanical keyboard as well so what i'm going to do is double check exactly how that sounds so now i'm going to do a little bit of typing 
and tap my mouse a few times and shake the desk a little just to see if you can hear much of a noise. Now I've got the microphone on the boom arm so you can hear the difference. So while you didn't hear much of the table rattling or anything like that, you could hear a lot of typing and so forth. If you're having the, boot, um, the microphone on your boom arm, you can turn the gain down so it doesn't pick up as much of the surround sound, uh, basically room noise and stuff like that. And also the microphone will be pointing more towards your mouth rather than potentially picking up more what's on your desk. And this is a comparison. So I'm shaking my desk at the moment. You shouldn't really hear anything. I'm just going to bump the keyboard a few times. And the mouse. And what I'm going to do now is do a little bit of typing again. Just to see if you see much of a difference. So overall the microphone with the stand is pretty good. The stand's very good, but it's one of those things you're going to get with any microphone. If you've got it close to your keyboard and the further away from you it is, the quieter you're going to sound and the flatter you're going to sound and it's going to pick up more of the surround sound or like for example your keyboard and mouse. And as you can see on that demonstration as soon as I moved the microphone to my mouth on a boom arm which luckily they do supply the fitting for one so that's good it sounds a lot lot better. So don't get me wrong it's nice they've got a stand but you can go out and buy a boom arm for very little and when you're spending the sort of a price for this I think it's around about £110 um, then and spending another probably £20 on a boom arm is really nothing and I would highly recommend it. Now I'm using the Blue Yeti microphone to see if you see any difference between that and obviously the NZXT microphone and obviously these are both priced at a very similar uh, price so they're roughly about £110 a piece but in theory the NZXT should have a slightly better sound quality on there because of the 24 bit compared to 16. But one thing the Blue Yeti microphones do have, they have options of changing the sound pattern. So, for example, you can have it like in a sort of a stereo format and different things like that. So, you can have one person sitting one side of the microphone to one sitting on the other, uh, where the NZXT doesn't give you that option. And for comparison, I've now got the Blue Yeti on a boom arm, so it's right next to my mouth, just like we tested with the capsule, to give you a comparison to see what's the best option. Now I'm using the microphone built into a Sandberg web camera to give you a rough idea what sort of difference the sound quality would be, and hopefully you can tell from this that there is a big difference. So in conclusion, we've got ourselves two pretty good microphones. Obviously, the Blue Yeti has been around for a few years, and the NZXT capsule, or at least at the time of reviewing, is brand new. So what's the differences between them? From what I can hear is when the capsule or the microphones are on the desk, on the stands, the NZXT does sound a bit better, where the Blue Yeti has a bit more of an echo to it and inconsistent sound levels. And I'm seeing that mainly through my bar charts, what I can see through my editing software, you can see the lines going up and down. Uh, and when you get closer to you, there seems to be less of a difference. So when you've got it on a boom arm next to your face, uh, probably three or four inches from your mouth, there seems to be very little between them, to be honest with you, at least from what I can hear and see. Now, they're both priced at around £110. Roughly, again, that's if you can get them at that sort of prices, because obviously prices at the moment are up and down. But if you want a microphone, what works better further away on your desk? I think the NZXT 
is probably the slight winner there. When you've got them close to you on a boom arm, it's roughly evens. One thing the um, Blue Yeti does do, which obviously the NZXT doesn't, is gives you the options of your different polar patterns, whether you can have it set up so you've got it like a, a studio mic like the NZXT one is, or if you've got it set up so you can actually interview someone so it records from both sides and a few other options like that. Looks wise, I think the NZXT does look the better one of the two. It looks a little bit slimmer as well, so if you have got it on a boom arm, it's not going to get too in the way, uh, because usually when you've got a microphone right up against your face, it blocks part of your screen, and sometimes it's difficult for people who are looking at you via a webcam or whatever to see you if you've got a big microphone in front of your face. So the definitely the NZXT wins there. Also, it's got a nice ring light around the bottom of it as well, which you may or may not like, but it does have the option there. Otherwise, very similar between the two, to be honest with you, and it's hard to pick a winner between them. But what's good is that NZXT, with their first microphone, or at least first one in a while that I know of, um, has actually matched the Blue Yeti. Now, some tips for you guys who are using microphones, again, make sure you're using a boom arm if you are wanting the best sound but on top of that you can get aftermarket software you can adjust sounds and stuff which yeah that's all okay and so forth and unfortunately these microphones don't come in with any third party software or their own software to adjust anything but one piece of software you can get if you're lucky enough to have an NVIDIA 30 series graphics card is NVIDIA Broadcast. That is an amazing tool and it will automatically filter out background noises and all sorts. So when you are typing away on your keyboard, no one will hear it. It's very good software and I do recommend it. And saying that, because I recommend that software, I also highly recommend the NZXT Capsule 